This fab fact has to do with the much loved and much missed Shane Rimmer. Ah, lovely. Now, as we all know, Shane was not only an incredible voice artist, uh, he was also, as we've discussed before, a writer. And among his writing credits are several episodes of Captain Scarlet, Joe 90, and the glorious Secret Service. Ah. Oh. And most relevant to today's fab fact, the Protectors. Right. I think, as we may have discussed before, Shane wrote two episodes of the show, uh, the first of which also guest starred Shane Rimmer himself. Yeah, funny that. The, uh, the episode in question was called <laughs> Zeke's Blues, in which Shane played Harry Rule's old pal, Zeke, as you might imagine, uh, who got into some troubles with baddies and things all go a bit wrong, as you might expect in The Protectors. But did you know that another very well-known actor had already been approached to play that role that eventually became Zeke. Oh? Well, Shane did, because he wrote the episode with that very person in mind. Ah, did he? Yes. Shane had first heard about The Protectors when he was guest-starring on an episode of another popular ITC show, which had been written by Protectors' script editor and regular Anderson contributor, the late Tony Barwick. Ah, one of the stars of the show had agreed to guest star on The Protectors, and uh, Dad was wondering that since Shane was working with this actor on this other series, maybe he should be the one to write the script that would feature him as a guest star. The show in question was The Persuaders, and the actor was Tony Curtis. Oh! <laughs> That's uh, not no, quite really. the uh, response I was expecting. Anyway, <laughs> uh, one. Shane played a baddie in Tony Barwick's Persuaders episode called Element of Risk, which, oddly enough, had quite a few Anderson elements in it. Hmm. Richard James, would you like to hear them? Yeah, oh, well, of course I would. Uh, here we go then. As well as Shane, there was also Protectors in Space 1999 star Peter Bowles. I love Peter Bowles. UFO guest star James Cosmo. Oh, I love James Cosmo. UFO Space 1999 and Space Precinct guest star Bob Sherman. A. And, let's say A, and regular supermarination voice David Healy. Ah. So do you not remember Bob Sherman from Space Precinct? Bob Sherman. What did he play? Do you know any idea? We'll have to look him up in a minute. Um, Yeah. There was also a character named Anderson... Mm. And the baddies were trying to get their hands on aircraft code-numbered Flight 104, which is the name of a Captain Scarlet episode, also written by Tony Barwick. You see, <laughs> it always yeah. come back, comes back to Anderson, whatever yeah, of we do. It does. Yeah. And Tony always use thing, reuse things like the 10th of July and, Pli- yes. and 104 and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, during production of Element of Risk, Shane spent a lot of time observing Tony Curtis seeing how he moved and behaved and writing down observations between takes so mm-hmm. that so that he cre- could create a character for his protector script that best suited Tony Curtis's style. Curtis eventually twigged something was going on and had to ask Shane just why exactly he was stalking him with a little <laughs> notebook. Um, but luckily, he completely accepted Shane's explanation. Very good. Uh, <laughs> right. Shane then got on with writing the script and tailored the story and its main guest character of Zeke to his experiences with Tony Curtis as much as possible. But, mm. unfortunately, as is sometimes the case... Curtis ultimately had to pass on the Protectors episode because of other filming commitments in the States. Shane was called for an urgent meeting where he was told, the script is fine, everything is fine, we've just got one teeny tiny problem, no Curtis. But rather than delay production, it was suggested that Shane himself could take over the role. Mm. Although Shane protested at first, he soon saw it made sense since he was the one who had the most invested in the creation of that character. So it's not like he just wrote an episode and said, I'm going to be the guest star in it. Yeah, which is what I would do. Uh, well, Shane would never do that. <laughs> no. uh, even though Dad and Sylvia probably would have let him do that. <laughs> yeah, because true. he'd done voices for episodes of Superman shows and he'd also written, obviously, for Scarlet and Joe 90. Yep. Yep. But those were a little bit different to a live-action main guest starring role. But they clearly had enough faith in Shane and that he could do it and do it well, which, of course... He did. Of course he did. So, if you go back and watch that episode of The Protectors, which obviously we recommend you do, and we you know, we do love The Protectors, <clears throat> mm-hmm. um, then you may spot little glimpses of Tony Curtis in Shane's performance because he was trying to keep up the spirit of the original casting as best he could. It's interesting to imagine Tony Curtis doing that guest spot on The Protectors, though, 
it made sense to try and get him since he was already in the UK doing the Persuaders. But mm. you have to wonder, Curtis himself, would he have got along with Robert Vaughan? Mm. Would they have clashed? Maybe they were already friends? We don't know. But presumably they must have crossed paths at some point on Hollywood circuit. So who knows what that sort of partnership would have been like. Yeah. It's yet another what-if moment where history ultimately went in a slightly different way than planned. Uh. 